Moss. This is the case of Tinker v. Des Moines of 1969. So, in the quiet town of Des Moines, Iowa, two siblings, Mary Beth and John Tinker, were about to make history. As the Vietnam War unfolded, the nation found itself divided, and dissenting voices began to rise. The Vietnam War had developed steam and began to take lives. This stirred emotions and sparked protests across the country. Many Americans, including Mary Beth Tinker and John Tinker, felt compelled to express their opposition to the war. Wearing armbands became a symbolic way to protest the war. It was peaceful and non-disruptive form of expression chosen by those who wanted to make a statement against the ongoing conflict. However, the Des Moines Independent Community School District decided to intervene. Faced with the growing use of armbands as a form of the protest, the school implemented a policy explicitly stating any students wearing an armband to school will be asked to remove it or face suspension until they were willing to come back to school without it. So this is one of the many examples of the Vietnam protests, the Students' Anti-Vietnam March of September 20th, 1969. The reason that the school was so against these protests is that it was not a neutral, a neutral stance. The U.S. had been in a piping mess and because of these protests and violence the school decided to reinforce strict rules regarding armbands the petitioner in this case was john f tinker their argument was that their armbands were a form of symbolic protest protected by the first amendment's right of freedom of speech and expression since the school took away these rights the school was in violation of the law <laughs> They also believed that since their armbands did not disrupt the classroom's learning environment, their silent protest was protected by the Constitution. So the defendant, Des Moines Independent Community School District, argued that wearing black armbands would be disruptive in the school environment. The dissent argued that the First Amendment does not grant the right to express any opinion at any time, limiting it. Students attend school to learn, not teach. The armbands were a distraction. School officials acting on a legitimate interest in school order should have broad authority to maintain a productive learning environment. The ruling of this case from the Supreme Court was that school officials could not censor student speech unless it, quote, materially and substantially interfered with the operation of the school. The justification of this ruling came from the First Amendment's right to freedom of speech. In this case, the court held that the school's prohibition of wearing black armbands to protest the Vietnam War violated the student's right to free speech. Now on to the clause that was used. In Tinker v. Des Moines, the central clause that was invoked and discussed was the free speech clause within the First Amendment to the Constitution. The relevant part of the First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The First Amendment, particularly the Freedom of Speech Clause, was crucial in the Tinker case as it addressed the students' rights to express themselves through symbolic speech, in this instance wearing black armbands to protest the Vietnam War. This case took place in the Warren Court, with Earl Warren as the Chief Justice. In a 7-2 vote count in favor of Tinker, the Supreme Court held that the armbands represented pure speech that is entirely separate from the actions of those participating in it. Justice Abe Fortas <laughs> delivered the majority vote and stated, students don't shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. This resulted in more freedoms for school children during this time. Studying Tinker v. Des Moines helps students engage with issues related to civil liberties and individual rights. It encourages critical thinking about the scope and li limits of free speech, fostering a deeper understanding of the legal and political dimensions of such cases. Through the First Amendment right, we can see that students do not shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. This means that students have some degree of free speech protection while at school, as long as it doesn't substantially disrupt the educational process. What?